Gill's birthday is Friday. His fifth birthday. His fifth birthday? No, his second birthday. <laughs> <laughs> just wishful thing. Did we just time jump? What the hell? Yeah, he's, he's a hitman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to Radio Labyrinth, everybody. No, my son is not a hitman, but he will be two years old by the time you uh, listened or watch this. And I'm very proud of him. And I'm a little punch drunk tonight, guys, because I've done... This is my third show of the day. And uh, earlier in the day, I did an interview with um, Madeline Brumby and uh, Shane Morton. We've had Shane on the show before a long time ago, but there's an event that they do at the Plaza Theater. And here's a poster for it. Can you see the poster? You can't if you're just listening. But it is uh, Professor Morte's Silver Scream Spook Show. Uh, showing this time on uh, June 3rd, Saturday, June 3rd at the Plaza Theater, the 1955 classic Revenge of the Creature, which is the sequel to The Creature from the Black Lagoon. And what they do is uh, two shows. They do a matinee show, which is uh, suitable for families and kids, and then they do a late night show and uh, where you can talk about jizz and horse cock. No, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> so they hadn't seen that. You know, we can say whatever the hell we want. Is it like an old timey like creature feature type of show? Yeah, and they do a live show with improv and games and 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 fun stuff. And and you know, with Shane, you're not going to be disappointed. Same with Madeline; they're both really cool people, and I enjoyed my conversation with them. So, if you're listening to this Saturday morning, you could tune in on WSB using the radio app, or if you live in Atlanta and you have a radio of all things, you can listen that way seven to eight p.m. Or you can catch the podcast, which comes out in a couple of days. So there's that. But yeah, they were a lot of fun to talk to. And uh, I I asked them to come on uh, this show. And they said, anytime. So I'd love to have them come on. Shane, uh, of course, did all sorts of fun things. He worked on Yule Log uh, with Casper uh, Kelly and uh, Dave Willis. And he also did all the stuff for uh, uh, Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell, among you know many, many other things. So... Uh, if you like that stuff, you'll like the interview and then we'll have them on here and we'll talk for even longer. It'll be cool. Uh, let's see. Speaking, well, you know, there's, I found out that there's the, you know, we had Val and Hall on the show last week from Righteous Gemstones and Tiffany, uh, the toilet baby. And she's friends with TJ Hassan, who's an actor that I had on, uh, the podcast. And they're all friends also with Josh Warren who we've had uh, numerous times on this show. So I thought this week I would do a nice thing and give Josh a plug. Uh, not that they're really going to need it because their guest this week uh, is uh, at the Dynamic El Dorado is Dan Fogler. Former podcast guest, Dan Fogler. That's right. And we hope to get him back again. And also Cooper Andrews, who oh, you nice. will know from uh, The Walking Dead. It's called The Pantheon. It's Sunday the 28th, 8 p.m., at the Dynamic El Dorado, which is in the Old Fourth Ward. If you uh, want to check it out, just go to dynamiceldorado.com. Uh, it's uh, improv. It's fun. We've talked to Josh about this uh, a little bit, but uh, we're going to uh, talk to him a lot more in the future. And I'll just say one more thing about it, and then we can get going here. Uh, he says, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true stories. And improv comedy. So people will be telling real stories and, and doing improv. And, and Dan Fogler is, I'm sure, a, a fantastic storyteller as well. So I love storytelling shows. Yeah, I do too. And he used I, to have one at Relapse. Like when I quit doing stand up, I would dip a toe back in and go and do the storyteller show at Relapse where you uh -huh. just sit on the stage and tell the host a story. And I loved it. And one of the stories I told was that Keckner story and it killed. Oh, I love that. See, you're good at telling stories. No. I think yeah. you're not good at being a tomahawk, though. No, totally not. No. <laughs> and it wasn't it funny that we found out that uh, you weren't the only one who had a problem with David Keck? Yeah, apparently, um, Everyone the State it. Patrol has trouble with him, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, if you uh, would like to hear us talk about shows that we're currently watching in a, in a little more in-depth than we do on here, we uh, are currently doing and we'll be finishing up Barry Season 4 on our Patreon page. And all you have to do to become a Patreon member is go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews, $5 and up, get you access to that weekly show. 
Uh, once Barry is done, we're going to take a little break and then we're going to come back and do Righteous Gemstones, which is probably one of the funniest shows, uh, serial episodic shows on TV right now. Um, and again, it is patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews. If you sign up for uh, the producer level, well, you get yourself uh, all sorts of things like a T-shirt and uh, stickers and uh, you get a, a customized doodle like this one I did of of uh, uh, Han Jones or Indiana Solo. And then a little Chewbacca thing at the bottom. <laughs> at the uh, short round. <laughs> short Baca. Short Baca's hat. I'm, I'm glad that you did not make Chewbacca Asian. <laughs> I wouldn't have known. How. I'm so glad you didn't do that. How would I have done that? You know put that little Chinese hat on him and give us a buck teeth. <laughs> any of that. Just any of it. Oh. Give him chopsticks for fangs. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, but we do thank all of our producers. Thank you, all of our uh, Patreon members. It's so awesome. Let's now thank our producers, Tim Slayton. Uh, Brian and Chelsea Smith. I am working on a drawing for them right now. Jim Fortner, Terry Fuller, Chris Chandler, Roby Neely, Kevin Jackson, Mike D, and Matt Carter. Uh, we appreciate you guys very, very much. And uh, if you're a, a producer who does a podcast with your son, we'll give you a plug. Check out <laughs> Roby's YouTube channel, Chatting with Daddy, uh, and enjoy that as well. When Gilbert's able to talk, I may have him do some stuff with me as well. So anyway, uh, this is a holiday weekend. So hopefully when you're traveling, you, you've got the podcast on, not if you're watching it, of course you got to pay attention to the road. Um, maybe if you're riding in the car with somebody, but or you could do like Steph and watch, watch it while you drive. Can you watch stuff that. while you drive. What do you I watch? watch? I watch the OC on the way to work. How? Way home from work. How the fuck on their watch? screen on her, t- on her, in her car. Yeah. Just like. I just play it and put it there. And, um, you know, when I have time at a light, I'll look down randomly and see what Ryan and Summer are doing. And... <laughs> you have a Tesla? This is something that drives on its own? No. No, it's just me tempting fate. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you get pulled over, what were you doing? I was watching the OC. <laughs> the... That show's 20 years old. What the fuck's your problem? Like, I never <laughs> watched it. Oh, so now you're into it. You know, that mm-hmm. happened to me. That happened to me with uh, Melrose Place. I was like, oh, when it came on, I was like, oh, nobody watches. This is dumb. I'm smart. And then one morning I woke up, it was on E! And I watched an episode and I was hooked. I'm so into it. And also, I didn't realize how many cool indie bands were on the show in the early 2000s. Like the Killers the, were first yeah. broke on there, Modest Mouse. Um, and then the main kid on there, now I'm so into Death Cab for Cutie, it's ridiculous. Now I'm listening to all their shit because there's so much Death Cab on the show. Who did the theme to the OC? Was it a Captain Planet? I don't know, Jeff. You don't know that song. Jason Planet. Schwartzman, the old band. I, I can't remember what they were Captain called. Planet. Not Captain, Captain Planet. Planet. Yeah. Captain Planet. Yeah. Captain Planet. Yeah. Captain Planet. California. No, no, I'm not a huge fan of that, but I do like it. Uh, like here in uh, where this where the soul meets body, like and you yeah. see like shots of the ocean and the and the beach and shit, and you're just like fuck my life, <laughs> fuck this yeah. shit. That was an amazing album. That first album. And their lyrics, their yeah. lyrics. Yeah, my I god. One song. I only know one. Um, what band are you talking about again? Death Cab for Cutie. Cutie. Yeah, I only know one song by them. Gil's looking weird today. I know. He has one eye. Hello, Izzy. <laughs> Hi, Izzy. Everybody. Ismerelda. Izzy, say hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, to- I told I told my son, Gil, that uh, Izzy, because <laughs> he kept going, I, I. <laughs> and I said, that, yes, Izzy has one eye. We have two eyes. And I said, Rizzo has two eyes. That's her other dog. I. And so he started walking around the house going, Izzy, I. Izzy, <laughs> I. And Caitlin said, why did you teach him about the one eye? <laughs> um, so he knows that everybody's different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, don't, you don't want him like out in public one day and he sees some one-eyed person. And <laughs> When I was a little kid, my mom was at the doctor's office and there was a guy there, you know, had one of those arms with the fingers around the elbow. Yeah. And, 
And I drew him and I went up to him and I went, I drew you a picture, mister. And it was just this guy with fingers on his elbows. <laughs> oh my God. My mom was like, embarrassed. That's why I remember it because my mom was pissed. We like Jonah Hill and Superbad. You had a lunchbox full of, of arms with fingers <laughs> on the elbow. <laughs> We're not making fun of people like that. We're making fun of me for, for bringing that up. Did you give him the strong hand? No. <laughs> Take no. the little elbow. It's the only one strong enough. Is a little elbow. All right. So it is, uh, let's, I'm so all over the place, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm just hosting the show is, is so different, uh, than it is sitting there waiting for your opportunity to speak. Anybody I've, else going anywhere for Memorial Day? Yeah. Anybody going out of town? Mm, no. no. Steph, you're not driving to like the beach with the OC on? No, no. I'll probably be watching the OC, but no, I'm not I'm not going. I'm 285. She's just going to take the whole weekend and just circle 285, <laughs> finish the rest of the season. <laughs> I'm go. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. To, definitely not. Well, we decided that since it's Memorial Day weekend, what is Memorial Day weekend all about? It's primarily about remembering and memorializing people who've served the armed forces in the United States. Am I correct on that? Yeah. And then, you know, you also remember people. I remember when I was a kid, uh, my grandparents would always go to a cemetery and put flowers at, at somebody's grave. Um, and it wasn't their parents because my uh, my great-grandparents were still alive at the time, so I don't know who they were visiting. But We would always do the, the band thing at the cemetery. That's right. That's right. And somebody would always pass out inevitably. Because it was hot? Yeah. Was it you who passed out? No, I never, I never passed out, but somebody would always pass out every year. Especially when, when we were younger, because we still, we had band uniforms. This is in the early eighties. We had band uniforms that my mom used in 1964. So mm -hmm. they went you know, 20 years or so. They used these and we got new ones. They were all polyester and dumb looking. It, it, mine was, um, I was in eighth grade and I played the flute at Ecorse high school and I was too fat for most of the uniforms. <laughs> and they had to, they finally found one that I could jam my fat ass into. <laughs> and the friction from the polyester with my thighs rubbing together, I'm surprised I didn't burn the school down. <laughs> By one time at band camp? Uh huh. I never went to band camp. <laughs> you never did that? Okay. No. Why not? Oh, well, yeah, where are we? This was a school in the in the hood. There was no band camp. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like you. Those uniforms were old as dirt. I think they were from the 50s. <laughs> yeah, my moms are shitty. I mean, I mean, the same ones, same slats, same everything, and they were wool. So no wonder people passed out. The yeah. polyester ones were different. All right. So since it's Memorial Day weekend, we thought we'd. Uh, First of all, thank everyone for the service and, and, you know, remember people in your family who sacrificed and uh, whether they made it back alive or not, they still served. So that's one thing we like to, to say thank you for. Um, but also there is a, a Reader's Digest article, the 28 movies to watch for Memorial Day, and we'll put the link in, the, you know, all that information so you could look at all of them. But we decided not to read that entire list that we didn't create and just pick a couple of them that we like. And, uh, I, you know, watching all sorts of you know, Memorial Day, if you have really nothing going on, I guess you could sit around and watch movies, right? And which I'll get to later. I'm in a rewatch phase, which I need to drastically break out of. I need to break out of that because I'm behind. I think History Channel 2 is showing the entire Band of Brothers series, which is really good to watch on Memorial Day. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've seen it so many times, yeah. though. I think I've watched it like five times. I like it when Ziggy brings his duck. When they're invading, oh, wait, messing up. That's a different show. Um, so we we all picked our own, and, and some of them uh, overlap. Uh, but uh, I'll just go first, and if they overlap, then we'll just you know keep the conversation going. But you know, a couple of movies that I like to watch, regardless of when it is. Um, Born on the Fourth of July. I agree with everything you say. But I serve my country, and they just want to take from it. Just take, take, love it or leave it. That's what I think. And then the other side is angry no, because we're not winning the war. How can we win a situation like that? How can we win? Tommy, what's the matter? Nothing. You guys remember Born on the Fourth of July? There. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tom Cruise uh, really, uh, did he direct it? No, he didn't direct it. 
That was Oliver Stone. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's a, kind of a true story based on Ron Kovic, who was a, a guy who was a gung ho, you know, lover of the red, white, and blue, and and you know he supported the country, you know, voluntarily went to Vietnam and got shot and was paralyzed and kind of Lieutenant Danish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of Lieutenant Danish. And I think maybe Lieutenant Dan was sort of based on him. Yeah. But um, it's a really an anti-war kind of movie from Stone. Oliver Stone, you know, visited Vietnam whenever he could in his film since he served there. But you have the, you know, Willem Dafoe, uh, Kira Sedgwick. That's when uh, I think a lot of people, including myself at the time, fell in love with her. Like, first you see her in braces and then you're like, oh, Kira Sedgwick. <laughs> Um, Tom Berenger, uh, and, and just a whole bunch of, of people in that movie that made it really, really good. And, uh, I don't know, <laughs> Frank Whaley was in it. Raymond J. Barry, Raymond J. Barry always playing a jerk dad. What can you say about it? I mean, when it came out, I think it was 1989, of course, Jeff and I saw it in the theater and, uh, we were both really like really biting into the, uh, really leaning into the anti-war stuff, you know, cause Bush was president and, you know, Panama and all this other crap. And then the music in the movie was so good. We were into all that music and, uh, it was just at the right time for me, I think to, to really enjoy a film like that. Uh, the next one for me would be Crimson Tide. No, I, I just think that in the nuclear world, the true enemy can't be destroyed. Tension on deck. Von Clauschwitz will now tell us exactly who the real enemy is. Von? <laughs> in my humble opinion, in the nuclear world, the true enemy is war itself. Crimson Tide, not really a war movie. I don't think there's an anti-war or a pro-war sentiment. It's just a, an interesting story. You guys like that movie? Yeah. yeah. I always liked Crimson Tide better than um, The Hunt for Red October. Yeah, there weren't as many stupid accents that didn't jibe. That's right, I'm from Russia. <laughs> Directed by Tony Scott, produced by Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer. Um, he's basically a very claustrophobic film with uh, Den Denzel Washington, Gene Hackman, uh, George, uh, how do you say his name, Zanudza? Zanudza? You know, from uh, Law and Order. Uh, early appearances by Vigo Mortensen and James Gandolfini. Uh, they're both in there. And when did it come out? I saw this movie in the theater by myself in uh, Shippensburg, Pennsylvania, when I was living down there. Then the day off from Bob Evans, I said, I'll go see Crimson Die. I'm the commander of the ship. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a quiet dignity in going by yourself. There is. I love going to the movies. Yeah. Stuff. And then the last one for me is Saving Private Ryan. Doesn't make any sense, sir. Why? Why me? Why do I deserve to go? Why any of these guys? They all fought just as hard as me. They're supposed to tell your mother when they send her another folded American flag. Tell her that when you found me, I was here and I was with the only brothers that I have left. And there's no way I was going to desert them. Saving Private Ryan. Uh, it was such a good movie. I saw it twice in the theater. The first time in the front row, which was a stupid mistake, because uh, you're looking up the whole time. Um, but Saving Private Ryan, I think, is one of my favorite Tom Hanks movies. And a uh, great ensemble cast, Steven Spielberg. Uh, just a, it's a great movie. So that's I'm going to leave it at there and, and let someone else go. Yeah, those are all of mine. So he stole all of mine, except for Great Escape. That's one of mine. Hills, isn't it? Captain Hills, actually. 17 escape attempts. Eight. Why do you like Great Escape? I'm curious. That's just a great movie. Stephen Queen. Yep. Yeah, Steve kind of a classic. Mm-hmm. Didn't Tarantino kill off that guy that from... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Rick Dalton. Yeah, Rick Dalton. Rest in peace, Rick Dalton. <laughs> they made it to 90. That's pretty yeah. good for an imaginary actor. Yeah. Usually they killed a lot, <laughs> lot sooner than that. He lived longer than Tina Turner. Anyway, go ahead. Rest in peace, Tina Turner. We can talk about it if you want. I uh, I was very shocked by that. I didn't know she was ill. Yeah, she's been ill for a while. Not shocking because she's 83 years old. That's that's a good long life. What an amazing story she has. We talked about it on air today. You know, the movie, What Love Got to Do With It, Angela Bassett, uh, great film, I think. And all that music, how could you not like Tina Turner? From her, you know, you know, 
rock and roll and soul days with the dancing and all that and the beaded dresses that moved with her butt and uh, to the 80s where she had so many hits how could you not like tina turner if you don't like tina turner i don't want to talk to you <laughs> see mine um apocalypse now i love the smell of night pump in the morning not very uh, uplifting no it's, it's it's not an uplifting memorial day film but i'm i'm sure it probably is a little closer to reality in some respects than some some of the other war films um yeah. I think they did that on purpose, but the performances, you know, you know Brando and Sheen, um, all the iconic lines. I mean, it's it's uh, it's something that I try to watch at least once a year, and this is always a good weekend uh, to throw it on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that's one of mine. Uh, Black Hawk Down. You know, a friend of mine asked me before I got here, "Why are you going to fight somebody else's war? What do you all think, your heroes?" I didn't know what to say at the time, but. If you ask me again, I'd say no. But nobody asks to be a hero. It just sometimes turns out that way. Uh, again, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago with the action movies. Um, you know, just a great military movie. Uh, tragic story, of course, but most of these tend to be tragic stories. Ensemble cast, um, again, an ensemble cast that would then go on to um, pretty much be the the casting list for most action movies for the next 10 years after it was made i think yeah, tom sizemore is amazing in that yeah. yeah just a great movie again it was it was a little more our generation of a war movie so it kind of you know hit home a little more to me um because i could relate to those guys a lot more than i could relate to you know 20 somethings from the 60s or the 40s um right but uh great movie and tigerland Sorry. You got any advice on how to stay alive in Vietnam? Courage is when you're the only guy who knows how shit scared you really are. You know, Tiger Land's a, it's not so much a, it's kind of a pre-war movie because it most, most of it happens at a training uh, camp that they had set up in Louisiana to make it uh, resemble the jungle of, of Vietnam so that you'd send all the troops there. It would kind of be the last stop before you would get sent over to Vietnam. Colin Farrell. Mm -hmm. uh plays the what's his name boss i think is his name and his he's kind of known around there as somebody you would go to if you wanted to find out how to not get sent over to vietnam he would try to find ways to to get out of service but he gets drafted anyway and so he's kind of up against a you know bigoted uh commander up you know above him so he has to fight through everything but it's it was an interesting take on uh, kind of like Good Morning Vietnam. It's an area of the military movies that you don't really get a lot of attention paid to. You get a lot of wartime. You get a lot of gunfights in most movies, but you don't get like training before the event happens. You know, things that where there are plenty of stories. Just like uh, an Officer and a Gentleman is the only one I can think of. Yeah. The training yeah. before. And, th and those are usually at type, you know, at like West Point or at a, yeah. mil you know, some kind of institution where this one was, you know, at that time, a lot of stuff was kind of at, you know, they would just throw it together and it would be, you know, it would be in existence for the time of the war. And then after that was over with, it'd be disbanded. So stories like that are I always find kind of interesting because they're not the, not the normal thing you see, but mm -hmm. that's one of my favorites, Tigerland. Oh, cool. Steph, do you have some? Uh, yeah. I'll, it's fact, it's funny that you say that about the training. My first one would be uh, Biloxi Blues. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that movie. That's such a great movie. Such a great movie. You've seen it so many times, and it's, Old you know, it's got... It, crackers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Walken, Ma Matthew Broderick, I mean, everybody's so... Southern prostitute with that voice. <laughs> Yeah. I, it's just it's such a timeless classic i've seen it i mean you can just watch it anytime it's on um so that'd be my first one my second one is a just because i was so in love with him river phoenix it was a movie called dogfight with him and lily taylor where he's on leave and they're going to uh you got to find the ugliest date and mm -hmm. bring her to this thing and then you win the the pool and of course so he starts to fall for her and I, you know, and of course, I was like, "There's no fucking way." But whatever, <laughs> right? And so, dogfight would be number two. And then my third one is a is a classic tale of um, just grit, and uh, it's a movie called Top Secret. 
It is a hospital, mein General. What is the condition of Sergeant Kruger? Yes, I see. Well, let me know if there's any change in his condition. He's dead. And I love that movie with uh, Val Kilmer. <laughs> it's a good movie. <laughs> You don't like it? Or are you being facetious? No, I love yeah, it. I love movie. it. I've yeah. seen it so I've seen it a million times. And you know, it's the it, it takes place during World War II and It's a Zucker Brothers movie, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> One of their best. You gotta straighten the rug. <laughs> and all the songs he sang all those um all How those songs. Silly too. can you get Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we wish uh and just remember the people who served. And even if you're not going to sit around for six hours and watch movies, uh, even if you don't have a relative who served, take a minute and think about it. Think about it. Think about the people who sacrificed. Think about the people who've been in Iraq and Afghanistan and places like that since, I don't know, 2001, 2002. Think of people that are still there. You know what I mean? People still have to go over there and clean up whatever mess the last three presidents have made. Four, five, six. We've been at war ever since the nineties. So, anyhow, enough of my proselytizing. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody, I want to say thank you to Mike Hall in Atlanta Pizza in Euro. By the way, big news: he uh, was catering for a studio on a big film. Wouldn't say what it was, but oh, cool! He told me about it. I think that's awesome. Uh, they are our longtime sponsor, and uh, we really appreciate all the support over the years. We do need to get back out there and do another meet and greet, so we're going to work on that. Uh, please join AP and G for the weekly Tuesday night team trivia from 7 to 8.30 p.m. And enjoy 16 draft beer taps available with 40 other beers to choose from in bottles and cans. And they do have a strong emphasis and focus on local Georgia and southeastern craft breweries. Serving the best freshly made pizza in Italian, or sorry, Greek and Italian specialties around in an authentic retro drive. Damn, I can't talk tonight. Retro dive pizza place with a come as you are family friendly atmosphere. But that doesn't mean you can't wear pants. <laughs> you really, really got to wear pants. <laughs> Dine in and take out available. Limited delivery is also available through Slice, DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats. If you're a business or corporate client, Who's looking to book a food truck for your next private event or catered luncheon? Just contact Mike Hall at Atlanta Pizza in Euro, 770-483-6228. They are open for dine-in and takeout Monday through Friday from 11 to 9, Saturday 12 to 9, closed on Sunday. Also, do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? Well, if you do, contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens. In Athens, Georgia, since 2005 with fast turnaround and affordable prices. Call 706-316-9366 or email them at athens at ldiline.com. All right, guys, so... What I said earlier in the show is I, I'm stuck now outside of Barry because there were all these shows that I was watching and loving. And uh, I still like Yellow Jackets, but I've kind of fallen off. Yeah, I fall off of that. I have no idea what the hell's going on. I've watched I'm, every episode, but yeah, I'm too. confused as hell. And it's, so I, it's, it's coming up. I mean, it's the end of it. And, and you got, what, two more episodes left? Yeah, and then you're not going to get another season for like three years because of the stupid strike. The, the strike isn't stupid. And the people striking aren't stupid. It's just stupid that these they won't pay them. Pay them, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying the strike is stupid in itself. I'm just saying, are the actors going on strike too? Did they vote oh. to strike? Wasn't that this week they were voting? They were. I think they voted yes, but I don't know if they're going on strike or not. I don't know. These studios can afford this shit, and they better not. Anyway, we can talk about that. They're talking about using AI and buying licensing fees for these actors. Because uh, there really are no more movie stars, like big name movie stars. Tom Cruise will be the final one. Uh, you know, you're not going to, you know, Timothy Chalamet is not going to fill a theater, uh, even though he's a great actor. I'm just saying there's no big time movie stars like there used to be. So I'm kind of stuck in this rut. And uh, I started rewatching, I rewatched uh, season seven of uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm just because it's one of my favorite seasons. That's a Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. He's a her pussy. <laughs> the most ridiculous line ever. And then the Groats disease thing with uh, uh, Duberstein. 
Uh, and then, of course, inevitably, it happens. I go back to my comfort space of the Sopranos. <laughs> was this number seven? Eight? No way more than that. I've... You're not watching Bupkis? I don't know what that is. It's a, the Pete Davidson show where Carmel is his mom. Oh no, I I don't I don't make it a habit of watching anything that he's in. That's good. Unless I yeah, eh. I got Bupkis for that. So anyway, that's what I am. But I do need to finish Yellow Jackets. And you guys are talking about a lot of stuff. Like last week, we talked about Silo, uh, Queen Charlotte. Are you guys watching The Idol? Oh God, I don't know. I may just have to watch it just to see if it's as bad as people are saying that it is. I'm hearing all these stories about Jizz. I don't know. The Weekend and Lily Rose Depp. That's her name, right? That's Johnny Depp's daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the Weekend. Oh, Jizz daughter. I, you know, obviously I, I love The Weekend's music. I'm a huge fan. But um, I saw some clips of him acting and it was terrible. Yeah. That's yeah. sad. That's sad. Probably as good as that remake of White Men Can't Jump. That was oh, horrible. That was disgusting yeah, i watched five minutes and i couldn't get past it i just mm-mm. i saw, i couldn't watch the preview and that jack harlow kid yeah he's great for what he does and stuff and he fills arenas and and these kids are mental about him and he's a pretty good live performer but th- he's not a fucking actor at all slash basketball bro or anything <laughs> well i read this i read this story about how people are mad now at sam levinson because uh, the show is so graphic and it's pointless, whereas opposed to Euphoria, where there's a story and that people like. I think it's just because the acting is good on Euphoria. People will always forgive uh, any sort of you know horrible things as long as the acting is good. Yeah, yeah that's true. That is true. And plus, uh, you have what's her name on Euphoria? In between. Yeah, that I don't really know very much about her. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I, don't, I, I just know she's a good actress. So. Well, I think the lead on the show is pretty damn good, too, though. Who's the lead? Zendaya? Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's okay. she's great on that show. She really is. Why does she only have one name? Can't she? Was she a singer first or something? Well, she was a Disney kid, right? Didn't she have yeah. a show on Disney? Yeah. So some of the other things I've been doing is listening to a lot of podcasts. Stephen Wright's been on everything, so I've listened to those. Those are great. And the Rogan one, he just does a lot of listening, of course. Yeah. Is that right? Um, <laughs> wow. Um, but the one podcast this week that came out that I've gone back to over and over again is uh, Will Sazzo on Theo Vaughn. You guys were there? <laughs> yeah. Where he does about 15 straight minutes of mocking Jesse Ventura. Yeah. yeah. And that is well-deserved mocking because if you watch the the Jesse Ventura Theo Vaughn, which I couldn't get through because he was so fucking annoying, three hours of just blathering it, you know, with Theo not being able to get any words out. <laughs> so I understand you're a comedian. <laughs> just, just ill. And, and how great Will Sasso is at doing that. Nobody can do him like Will does. Yeah. It's the best. He sounds exactly like... Hey, the kids saw him at the Beacon in New York City a week and a half ago. Saw so Will or Theo? Theo. Oh, okay. The, the Beacon. Like I, I had, I, I'm assuming that he did, yes. But he was very geeked about going. I bet. Oh, man. Uh, 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 oh, man. Uh, uh, I haven't really been practicing. I have to learn how to do that stupid DeSantis. Don't get mad if you think Ron DeSantis. <laughs> <laughs> He always yeah. just seems so over it. He's just over it. He just announced his presidency today. Yeah. Or his Man. candidacy. Nobody yeah. nobody could hear it, but but he announced it. The it's first 20 minutes of that thing was just like garbled mess. With Elon, yes. And um, so one of the things I was thinking about doing is um, uh, buying Radio Labyrinth for $45 million. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So Ford. American. Mm. 40 million. That's 10 million for each of us. Oh my God. I'd fuck it. There, I wouldn't even go into work. I wouldn't call them nothing. <laughs> no. Just disappear. Yeah. This is a fucking work. peer. I'd still work. I just, you know, put the money away and uh, never have to want for anything. But you, you still live in your shit 
neighborhoods and your shit. I mean, if you won the, if I won the lottery and I lived in a dump, I, I, I don't now live in a dump, but if I did, I would stay in the dump and I would not tell anybody, you know? Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't tell anybody, but no, I would get the fuck out of the state. Yeah. Yeah. The swamp and the fucking swamp. Yeah. We're about to have swamp ass season. Mm -hmm. It's about that. It's, you know, they've been, the weather's been toying with us down here in Georgia uh, or over here or up here, depending on where you live. But it's been teasing us. Like we'll, we'll get three or four days where it's hot and then we'll have these cool days where it's rainy and cool, but it's going to sneak up on us and just hit us right in the balls. And then it's going to be swamp ass for six straight weeks. I mm -hmm. blame Christina Edwards. What did she say? Just I blame her for all the weather. Oh, I see. I thought you said I agree with her. You can't. No, blame, I blame her. Can't blame the weather. This is in Italy where they, you know, arrest geologists because they couldn't predict an earthquake. Do you, Do you have a Christina Edwards imp impression? By the way, no. no. Why? Okay. She um, just she said some words weird that I thought maybe you would have picked up on. Like I noticed them, but Barizzi, Barizzi, Saturday. Yeah. She's good though. She's a good weather. Yeah. I just, I didn't know if you had an impression in, in your back pocket of her. No, doing, I didn't. When you're doing your DeSantis training, you should just watch the interview he did with Pierce Morgan. Yeah. You'll get all of the, you'll get everything from that. That Matt friend guy already got him. Yeah. That guy came out of nowhere. Now he's like the, the top, uh, impressionist. Yeah, he's, that he's, he's, he's trying to be the next James Austin Johnson. Get on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. James Austin Johnson's really, really good. Yeah. Should do Tim Scott. Yeah, he seems easy to do. And I wouldn't get in trouble because he doesn't have an urban affectation. <laughs> you wouldn't get in trouble because he's a Republican. Well, that too. Well, some Republican might complain. But we're not talking about the differences between political... I don't give a shit. Well, I'm just saying, you know how, you know how they're so hardcore against being woke. Cancel culture. <laughs> Gave culture. Uh, Matt Friend, though, he does the best Howard Stern impression I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, Michael McKeon's was pretty good. Michael McKeon's was good for 90s Howard Stern. This is Howard Stern now. Right, right, right. He sounds just like him. And he also, I don't think his Trump is very good, um, but that's just me. I don't think mine's very good, but I don't think his is very good either. Uh, but he does do a DeSantis. He hasn't quite hit it yet, but he is a very talented guy. I hate all these young people coming up. You know, <laughs> fucking people that, that don't hate the way they look because they like they're handsome and they they're symmetrical. I'm asymmetrical and I hate the way I look. So <laughs> TikTok video. I'm like, can I cover this with something, please? Uh, uh, like something. Your face looks like a hexagon. <laughs> I got eleven thousand views on it. One of my TikToks. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. That, that's pretty surprising to me it's the righteous flintstones one i did where i took characters from the flintstones movie and put them on characters from the righteous gemstones and uh i noticed jeff looks at him but he doesn't like him so fuck you jeff <laughs> oh you got you got you got your little footprints turned on yeah you don't like any of them so people i don't know can like them and then i did one where i took uh, actual flintstones footage uh, that was, i like that one better yeah that one was funny but i posted it and then it got flagged and kicked off. Oh, really? Yeah. For what? Be Copyright? They said, no, content, original audio, content violation. And I don't know if it was the swear words I left in, because the other ones have swear words in them, or it was because I had Barney Rubble's laugh at the end. So I cut the laugh out and bleeped the swear words and put it back up, and it's now at 47. Nice. Hmm. Whatever. 47 whole views. <laughs> TikTok's fun. I like it. I like it better than Twitter. Or Instagram, <laughs> just you just can you like you can get on TikTok and then six hours later, you're like, well, I just watched seven thousand. I just I just watched nine thousand Mister Slingshot videos on TikTok. What's Mister Slingshot? <laughs> Seek him out, man. You know that ride, the Slingshot. Uh huh. It's a carnival ride. Yeah. This guy just has videos of people riding that that ride. Steph, what happened to our, our TikTok, potential TikTok Facebook guide? Anything? Do you ever get back to you? Or is it just mm, like, the last I heard, he was like, yeah, we'll set something up. And then, you know, and then, I said, well, just let me know. Oh, I know why Jeff likes Mr. Slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> the real Mr. Slingshot? Yeah. Yeah, I'll follow him. <laughs> I know absolutely why Jeff likes him. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I can just imagine. Is it one specific gender that's in the slingshot? Yes, it is one, one okay. specific gender. Well, I don't know how to do the slingshot, right? 
I don't know how these people identify. So we can't say that, you know, it'd be accurate. All right, guys, you want to do Yeah, their tits are showing. <laughs> Steph, sorry for the sexism. No. You don't deserve that. I, I don't really don't feel like it's that. projected towards me, so I'm fine with it. Do you want to say anything about Ray Stevenson? Yeah, I did. I wanted to, we, we talked about Tina Turner, 83 years old. Uh, Ray Stevenson, 58. Um, I didn't know he was ill. What happened to him? Did you say I don't know. Well, I didn't hear what the cause of death was. They, they said he was on a set and was rushed to the hospital, and that was the last that anyone had heard before he passed the week, over the weekend. It'd be like a John Ritter kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Of course, the, the Vax people are all, he gets because he got the vaccination. You don't know that. Shut up. The same people did that with uh, Jimmy Fox. Oh, Jimmy Fox. Yeah. It's all crazy conspiracy stuff. But Ray Stevens was awesome. I first saw him in Rome. Rome, but yeah. Anything mm-hmm. I've seen him in, I've liked him in, even if I didn't like what I was watching. He was on some shitty ep- uh, season of Dexter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he was an awesome Punisher in Wars. Wars yes, zone. he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking was. He was a real good Punisher. I thought he was the best out of all of them, actually. You know, Thomas Jane was okay, but I thought he was the best one. Yeah, he was the most believable badass. Yeah. And uh, he seemed like a nice guy, just a but but the character in Rome, man, holy shit! I love Rome. I might me too. It was mean, brutal. Yep. And we still got one more uh, series. We got Ahsoka. He's he's in Ahsoka. That's coming. Yeah. Out. He'll be. In. Who's he playing in that? Um, mm-hmm. he, he's a Sith with a red lightsaber. So that's what you've seen in the trailer really? of him. So when does that start? I'm gonna have to find a way to watch that because I can't <laughs> Disney after. Um, Mando. Pretty uh, soon. I thought it was like August. September, maybe. His views. Or, 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 or. And snooze. News. Yeah, uh, we didn't do it last week, but it would have been Family Sloan, mm-hmm. High Desert, and Love to Love You, Donna Summer. Which of of these I've only watched the first two episodes of Family Stallone. So, I'm enjoying it. What's the Donna Summer thing? Mm-hmm. I love you, Donna Summer. It's I think it's on uh, HBO Max or maybe Showtime. It's a documentary about Donna Summer done by her daughter. I might watch that. I love yeah. Donna, and I like those kind of music documentaries. I'm gonna watch that, but I haven't watched it yet. All right, and all right, this week. Fubar starts on Netflix, the new Arnold show comedy. That's a comedy? Yeah. With Arnold? Mm, yep. I think it looks funny. Who yeah. else is it? Uh, uh, Fortune Fiends to her. Oh, she's funny. Yeah. Man, he's supposed to be Netflix's new ambassador to action. He's actually on Netflix's payroll more so than just an actor. Yeah. Yeah, they hired him. Okay as an executive but i thought Ooh, it would uh, be that canadian i was i was excited i thought it was that canadian foobar the guys that were some of the trailer park boys uh, stuff they made a movie called foobar and yeah i don't know how they got around that because it was on netflix too spelled the exact same way yeah who's got thompson's in it maybe i'll watch it yeah yeah i'm gonna definitely i'm gonna abuse it, it. I just watched, um, I never saw, it came out in 2013, The Last Stand. That was funny. Yeah. Than that. Yeah. It's Arnold. Schwarzenegger where he's the sheriff in that little town. I've never seen that. And it's got Johnny, Johnny Knoxville in it. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. It's a good action movie. Mm-hmm. Like Gil, Gil it's walks total. Around, Gil walks around yeah. the house pointing at Forrest Whitaker and going, I. Hey. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Steph. I didn't mean to step on you. <laughs> all right, number two is one that I hope we're all going to view. Yeah, fuck yeah. I think it should leave. Starts the 30th. Uh, you we'll watch it three times before the first. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then we'll get all sorts <laughs> the of... The trailer movies. came out today. Did you watch the trailer? Oh, where is it? YouTube? It's on t- Twitter. I saw it on, but I'm sure it's everywhere. All right, I got to check that out. Mm-hmm. So that's a view from everybody. And then number three... This is for Tim. It's called Silo's Baking Competition. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm watching that. I've already watched the other two. This is not uh, Rebecca Ferguson making pies in in the silo. No. <laughs> this is your arch nemesis, Joanna Gaines, 
baking show. It's turned into an actual series now. Oh, so. cool. Because you only had two specials so far, yeah. right? And I watched, I watched both of them. I'm so excited. So is, what, is it going to be on Food Network or? It's on that, that uh, Jane's Family Network, whatever it's called, Magnolia yeah, Network. I'm not, I'm not downloading another app. Is that on Discovery or? I don't know. Magnolia Network. You have to find it. Damn it. I was. If you watch the other ones, it's probably on the same as that. Well, you know, they had, they always do this song, they always do the spring baking championship and the, and the fall and the Christmas or whatever. Well, they did a summer one. So we're like neck deep in that. I was so excited. They finally did a summer one. Mm. And on, um, Roku, I mean, I mean, they did, um, um, the great American baking show. Yeah. Was that any good? Yeah, it was. It was really good. I think I can probably get my wife to watch this one, <laughs> Joanna Gaines. So maybe it'll be available on Vudu and Amazon. Oh, good. It is. You have to yeah. pay a minute. Yeah. All right. Does so, your wife know how, how much you you, you want to hang out with her her husband? I don't want to hang out with him anymore. Get his teeth fixed. <laughs> okay. I don't need to see that. You're not into him anymore. No. No. And she has too fierce of an eye. <laughs> uh, my staff pick this week is a movie that's uh, debuted this week on Tubi by Matt Malero. You know Matt Malero, the co-creator of uh, Aqua Scene Hunger Force, and uh, has been with Adult Swim for a while. He has a new movie called Postacopolis. So I can't say it. Postacopolis. That is on Tubi. Um, a celebrity chef loses his mind when there is a worldwide ban on gluten that destroys his career. He told me about this a couple of months ago, so I want to see it. I'm going to have to watch it in the next week or so, because I will be having him on the podcast in two weeks. Steph, you want to do yours? Uh, I, fell, yeah. I fell asleep during yours. Really? Yeah. I loved it. I thought it was so good. It was okay. I uh, thought it was kind of boring. I thought it was very funny. Um, I laughed a lot, and I thought the action was good, and the special effects were really good. But it's uh, Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves. That was on Paramount Plus. I thought it was great. It rem- reminded me of like uh, I don't know, like an older movie where I would actually enjoy watching. I heard off vibes like that. That it was like '80s vibes. Yeah, I mean, Chris Pine I thought was really funny, and Michelle Rodriguez was believable as kind of the badass chick or whatever and um hugh grant was funny hugh grant was funny and then the the little side characters the little the little sorcerer dude was yeah. didn't believe in himself he was pretty funny but all the special effects were really good and, yeah, and the uh, makeup was good and they there are the, the cgi yeah, characters the dragons look great even yeah. the dude from uh bridger bridgerton he was really good in it too donnie most in it <laughs> no donnie most it, it was it. okay. I just I fell asleep at the end. I'm excited to see it. I heard it has a bunch of. If you played Dungeons and Dragons, it's got a lot of Easter eggs in there too. Yeah. Think, so. Oh Especially yeah. The yeah, like the treasure chest that's got teeth. No. Oh, okay. That's, cool. That's okay. Like from the original Monster God. Yeah. Jeff and I can't watch it. We'll get in a fight after. <laughs> <laughs> but all of the special effects were great. I'm. I really wished I would have seen it in the theater. It, this was one I feel like they could have put it. They could have released it at the theater, and it would have done okay. Mm, yeah. Uh, mine is. Uh, it's a YouTube. Actually, it's a YouTube video. Now, um, I ran across it this week, and it's been playing constantly um, as I drive around. It is from Red Sky is the name of the YouTube channel, uh, but it is a Norm McDonald. It's they they put together all of his radio interviews, like all of his when he's on morning shows, when he's on anything. It's eight hours long. Does it have the Dennis Miller interviews too? Because he was on there all the yeah. time. Oh, it's got Miller. It's um, he talks about. I mean, it's it's everything that they could find that's that's available um cool. it's on there and it's 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 decent uh, the audio quality on some of them you can tell are really old and they digitized them so some of it has a little bit of a a digital thing to it but it's but there's so many and you can just kind of skip if you want you can just kind of skip through but so it's much stern funny stuff yeah stern stuff's on there but uh yeah. but yeah i mean it's, it's it's classic norm i mean him him cutting jokes him just pulling stuff on off the fly and it really, some of them you can tell if he doesn't like the interviewer, he'll just control the show. He was on such a show with Jake Sudeikis and Sudeikis didn't get a word out. 
<laughs> See, like the host. But that's, that's fun. Cool. And it's on YouTube. Yeah. And I'll put the uh clip put the link in the comments below. Awesome. Hey, Mine man. is uh Conan O'Brien for the, the summer they're doing a reading of the script of the Hans and the Lost Hans and Franz movie. Oh really? The, the girly man dilemma. Oh God. This was the movie that they wrote for, for Hans and Franz that never got made. Mm-hmm. But it's actually Dana Carvey and Kevin Neal and, and Robert Smigo and Conan reading it. Fuck yeah. And maybe they they were teased that maybe Arnold was going to come in, but I don't know <laughs> if he will or not for real. I'll watch it. It's yeah, just worth sure. listening to. Where do you I think it's on YouTube it? also? Podcasts. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I started watching that uh, Smart Loss on the Road docuseries on the new Max channel. Mm -hmm. I watched about three of them. It's pretty good so far. If you like the Smartless podcast, it's fun to watch. That's cool. Yeah, it's just about their, their live tour that they did. Like, they did a six-city live tour. I might watch that, actually. Yeah. I don't like watching podcasts in front of people. It's, there's a, there's hardly any of the podcasts in it. When it when, like, when they go to the actual live show, then mm -hmm. basically when the episode ends. Okay. So it's all just the backstage shit. and the, Oh, I like that a lot, then. Yeah. It's okay. kind of like comedians and cars getting caught. Or not comedians and cars. What was that? Comedians of comedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With Patton Oswald and Brian, Brian Posehn. And it's kind of like that. Cars. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, uh, guys. And thanks for indulging me tonight with my manic behavior. I'm now starting to come down from the coffee. And I have to go get dog food and then something to eat. Not that you care. Speaking of dog food, Steph, what's going on with Barkville? Um, I believe they are going to be at the downtown pooch on saturday if i'm not mistaken mm. and then i know the following week it's the first sunday in june so it'll be at caffeine and octane uh out there in kennesaw so come on out and um you know you want to adopt or if you'd like to foster they really need fosters right now um but yeah barkville dog rescue.org woof woof all right, guys, thank you very much. We will talk to you next week. So, in. Keep it canon. <laughs> <laughs>